Hello and welcome to my video. Now, a question that I'm frequently asked um, by my students who come here to learn from me and also um, via YouTube is uh, how to uh, apply a glaze to a painting. Well, if you if you go on, if you actually research this, you'll find lots and lots of uh, YouTube videos who talk about glazing and they go into the scientific reasons why glazing works or why it doesn't work or what colors to use, what sort of oil to mix with it and how much oil um, and it just goes on and on. Now when I was a student I asked one of the tutors about glazing and he actually summed it up quite well. He said it's not an exact science, basically throw the paint on wipe it off, uh, obviously the bits where you want less glaze you wipe off, not the whole thing, and just see what happens. It's all part of the fun. And frankly, I think painting should be fun. Uh, if you're doing this sort of painting and it doesn't really matter what it looks like, this, so obviously this is not a commission, this is something that I'm doing purely to please myself and hopefully please uh, the people who watch the video. So the the whole thing about my paintings is to teach people to relax. I don't want people to paint like me necessarily. Um, all I'm doing is demonstrating uh, the, the frame of mind um, that you need to be in to paint a picture. So back to glazing. Basically all glazing is is mixing paint with oil or glazing medium, doesn't matter what you use frankly, and applying it to a dry painting and then doing what exactly what I'm doing here and taking off the bits that I don't want uh, the, the colour to be too strong. Some people say, oh, you should only use the transparent colours uh, for glazing. I don't agree with this at all. Any colour that you get from a tube, if you add oil to it, it's less transparent. Transparency of colour is to do with the, the actual pigment, but it's, it's, it's mostly to do with how much you dilute it in its simplest terms. That's probably the best way I can describe it. So, um, basically, have fun. Put the colour on. If it isn't right, take it off. Put another colour on. So, if, you're, if you have a plan in your head and you think, well, if I glaze this colour over that colour, I'll get so-and-so colour, it may not work out that way. It is not exact, so just have fun. Chuck the paint on, take it off, see what happens. And the biggest um, tip I can give anyone who's glazing is this. If it doesn't look right, take it off. If it looks good, step back, leave it. Walk away and come back uh, 20 minutes later. Have a look. If it still looks good, chances are that's going to be a good indicator as to how you're going. So this painting is, um, I think I've got a feeling it was a demo painting I did for one of my students probably about, um, I don't know, maybe two months ago. So it's completely dry and I can do anything to it really. It doesn't matter, like, um, you know, if I make a mistake, if I decide to change my mind, I can take off my glaze or put more on, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I just want to intensify the um, the horizon, get a bit more red into it. And there we are. That's it. After it's wiped with the magic of um, video editing. I've done my best to keep out of the way on this as much as possible because I still get comments from people uh, advising me on what sort of camera angles uh, would work best. I've, I've tried um, a few tests where I put the camera over to my right, looking across the painting, but um, you don't see the painting clearly. I know I get in the way a bit, but um, it, it really, you know, if I, if I can keep out of the way and get that shoulder of mine off the screen, uh, this is, I think, the best angle because it's straight on. And um, later in the painting, I will be making a few changes. I decided that apart from just glazing the sky, I would uh, do a bit of work on the landscape as well because I just uh, I wasn't happy. It's too uh, too monochromatic um, and possibly not contrasty enough for me. I do like strong contrasts in a painting. Uh, 
Uh, for those interested in the colours, I will endeavour to put them in the info box under the video. But um, really the sky is, um, it's not a lot of colour in there really. It's white, um, titanium white. The pale blue is royal blue. Uh, the dark colours are made from Payne's grey. Uh, and that's really it. That's, um, so, you, you, you know, you need very few colours to get an interesting sky. The, oh, the thing about glazing here, I suppose I could mention this, is that um, it does give you a roundness to your clouds. Um, clouds are quite sort of round, if you know what I mean. Um, they need form, and you need to create the illusion of the cloud coming over your head. Now, never forget, the, the sky is not a backdrop. It's, uh, think of it as an overdrop. It actually comes right over your head, and you want to get that, that feeling in your paintings. It will add to the depth of the picture. So here we are. I'm, I've decided that the, the landscape, as I said, just, it was just lacking a bit. And I, I thought, well, let's just, let's just punch it up a little bit. Add a, this is just sap green with oil um, that I'm adding here. Um, not being particularly careful as usual, just chucking it on. The refinements will come when I start using uh, the paper towel. And then uh, I noticed as I was doing this that uh, compositionally it just uh, was lacking a little bit in the middle. So I sort of uh, made a few changes. When you put a glaze on like this, um, for instance, let me just give you a little uh, pointer here. You notice that, there are, that there's a hint of some uh, tree trunks in the, just under my hand, where my hand is now when I get out of the way. There we are. Now I can glaze over those uh, and then just wipe back to get the tree trunk effect. Uh, so you can be a little bit selective about how much you take off. I noticed um, yesterday I was driving around. I mean, I, 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 I'm beginning to wonder whether I'm a bit of a hazard on the roads, but I do. I do I drive quite carefully. But I look at fields when there's um, no other traffic around. I look at the different textures that you get on fields. Um, so if you if you have an idea in your head that um, okay, I'm going to paint a big green field, uh, just hold back on it a bit. And I recommend that you go out or look at photographs of fields. Now you'll get some, in some agricultural areas, you'll get where there's a crop in a field. And the field will look quite a monochromatic green, just one flat green, because that's just that one crop. I, I'm not over keen on painting pictures like that. I would rather paint a field that is... Uh, varying types of grass and other vegetation where you get a mixture of color and tone um, and texture um, this is ideal for getting texture into fields and uh, if you once you start painting by the way you'll notice that um, you do look at the landscape differently uh, you you will um, you'll find yourself analyzing things uh, it may sound boring, but it, it's it's worth getting this in your visual memory. Things like you know the odd little the hint of a path across a field in the distance, just something to break it up a little bit, make it more interesting. In fact, the not the bit I'm working on here, but right there that's just showing when I when I get my arm out of the way, I got as much texture on that field as possible, and that's from what I can remember of what I was looking at yesterday. Uh, little bits little bits to break it up. Even even uh, above my hand now, there's a very thin line across the field there. And that's just uh, using the technique that I'm using here, and that is to pinch the paper into a fine taper and just drag it across the field. As I say in pretty well all my videos, if you put a mark on a landscape like that, the brain will uh, rationalise it and decide to um, give, it a, um, give it a name or give it a purpose. So a line across a field can be a track in the distance from a tractor or a footpath or something like that. The other thing you can do um, with glazing, um, which I find 
it's quite fun actually. Uh, I, I'm being a little bit meticulous on this one, but what you could do, you could take the same painting and just paint one colour over the whole thing when it's dry. Just paint the whole thing with, I don't know, um, a bluish green. Uh, this um, and then just uh, wipe off. So rather than just work on little areas, do cover the whole thing. Then start wiping back to reveal what is underneath, and you'll find that uh, you can turn what started out to be quite a boring painting into something that's really quite interesting. And I, I can't emphasize this enough. Work for about 20 minutes. Now you may feel as you're working that everything is going absolutely perfectly and it's wonderful and you're producing a masterpiece, but take a break. Just I, I recommend about 20 minutes. Step back, go and do something else, come back to the painting. If, there's, if there are things that aren't right, you'll see them. And uh, it, it, it's almost like... Um, it's almost like hypnotizing yourself uh, you, you get into the when when things start to go reasonably right in a painting you can actually um, you, you're I don't know explain it really it's like um, it's like you enter another realm everything looks wonderful oh aren't I clever all that sort of stuff goes through your mind and you think this is brilliant I'll just keep going but um, try to ignore that feeling take breaks uh, things will change when you come back to look at the picture. This has happened to me several times. I mean, I, I upload videos and I upload to uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, not everything gets uploaded. I do, I do fall into that trap occasionally of um, getting, uh, getting to the point where I will paint for six or seven hours non-stop. I don't do it so much now, I might add, but... Um, this is in the past, I guess. And then I would next day I would look at my painting and I, oh my goodness, you know that's done. and it, a few of them ended up on bonfires actually. One one ended up uh, in France here. I took one up to the local um, what they call the déchetterie, which is the rubbish dump. Um, very well organised in France, by the way. They have uh, nice big containers for all the things you want to throw away. And I remember I threw away this painting probably just over a year ago, and I thought, I just had enough of it, so I chucked it into the dumpster. And um, not just because I wasn't happy with the painting, but um, it did have a bit of mould growing on the back, and um, uh, I just couldn't get the mould off. So anyway, I dumped it, and the guy that ran, runs the um, uh, dump, he, uh, he eyeballed this picture, and I looked in my mirror as I was driving out of the place, and he was, he was, he was dumpstered diving as soon as I was out of sight and uh, he grabbed the painting so well yeah, made someone happy um, I had a little word about um, my teaching uh, I'm just about to start teaching in fact tomorrow I have my first student of 2019 um, uh, his name is Emilio and he's coming all the way from Spain uh, quite looking forward to that. Last year was uh, intensely busy. I've actually lost track of how many people I taught, but I think it was around, uh, it was probably 30. So it was a very busy year. Uh, and um, also, I that that's on a one-to-one -one basis, except um, well, mostly one-to-ones. Some people came in twos. Did I have three? No, I think they were always either ones or twos. And there were about five doubles through the year, I suppose. Um, this year, I have two venues. Um, I have one in uh, June, from the 1st to the 6th, and that is full. That's uh, 12 or 13 people coming from all around the globe. Um, and... Um, I discovered the other day that uh, because a, a guy dropped out, he he um, had to change his plans at the last minute. So it's um, it's twelve or thirteen ladies that I will be teaching, which will be very interesting. Um, and then I've got another venue in August, and that one is filling up. I was hoping to have a third one, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, it may just be um, uh, a little bit exhausting. Who knows? I, actually, I look upon it as fun. I quite enjoy, enjoy teaching. So, 
Now, this, um, what you're seeing here is a more accurate representation of the colour. My ongoing camera problems, I know I have them, uh, thanks for the advice people have given me, but I do, I do know how to fix these problems. Uh, it's just that my camera is not behaving, and I think I may just have to take that up to the rubbish dump, but uh, maybe not. We'll see. So my camera is excellent at close-ups. It may seem a little dark, but I like I like dark paintings. Um, I've I've never been uh, a painter of pretty pretty pictures. Um, the idea of my paintings going on chocolate boxes gives me the horrors. I like I like the drama and the mystery, and I like light spots. Um, this is a a style, um, well, I think pretty well all my life I've liked this. It's tonalism, basically. Although I call it tonal impressionism, but uh, maybe that's um, maybe that's just uh, my own invention. I'm not sure. So there you can see I'm pulling the paper into a little point there, just to add a mark on that field. So there we are, a little bit, um, a little bit more fiddling. You notice how I, I change the shape of the paper according to the sort of mark I, I want to make. I find that if you um, use a, a thin strip of the paper like this, you get more intricate um, twinkles of light in your painting, and um, I, I just like that. It makes the painting look uh, more rich. And I have to say, it, it's the illusion of detail. So my my video that I uploaded last year, uh, last January, um, called The Illusion of Detail, that's done well. It's, uh, I think it's 1,030,000 views. So thanks for those of you who watched that. Uh, it certainly changed my life. And um, what I'm what I'm going to do, um, nothing to do with views, uh, at the end of this video, is uh, I'm going to upload a series of paintings. If I've got the before photograph, um, I'll upload those so that you can actually see what the painting looked like before I glazed it and after. So um, it depends if I can find them on my computer. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. But before you go, here is, um, as promised, a couple of before and afters. So this tree, basically monotone, and then with some glazing added, that's the effect that I got from that one. And this one, again, just all painted in Payne's Grey, and it ended up like that. So, while I've got your attention, just one more comment about uh, my teaching. If you are interested, if you go to my website, um, to the uh, retreats section, you will find all the information that you need to get in touch with me or to, well, get in touch with me and hopefully book for one of my venues. Again, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye for now.